is continue to return to church every Sunday. Yet, there are those who for various reasons cannot be present in our parishes at this time. We are here for you. We invite you to pray with us from wherever you are. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Spirit of God dwelling within us. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Sunday TV Mass. This Mass is going to be an hour in honor of the beautiful Feast of Pentecost, when Jesus sent the Holy Spirit upon his apostles and disciples and the Blessed Mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us praise the Lord our God for this water he has created and which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. I saw water flowing from the temple, from its right hand side, May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins, and through the Eucharist we celebrate, make us worthy to sit at his table in his heavenly kingdom.
Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of your Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native tongue? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews, Greeks, slaves, or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send from the Father, the Spirit of truth that proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when, this, when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> well, good morning, everyone, and this is a beautiful feast of Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday is a special feast day or solemnity, really, in the church when God the Father, through Jesus, sent the Holy Spirit upon the apostles who were gathered in fear in the upper room. You'll notice at Mass, liturgically, we have a few changes today. We have, instead of the white vestments of Easter season, the red vestments, which symbolize the fire of the Holy Spirit. Also today, we want to acknowledge that this beautiful Easter candle, which represents the risen Christ, will no longer be here in the sanctuary for the successive Masses until next year. It's also present for every baptism because this is a special candle which is lit from the Easter fire and symbolizes Christ's presence. Remember, he ascended into heaven, then he sent the Holy Spirit among us. This candle reminds us that the risen Christ is here with us in the Mass and all throughout our lives. On Pentecost, something, something fantastic happened on Pentecost Sunday. <clears throat> you know, 40 days after he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven. Then he sent the Holy Spirit. They were all in an upper room. They were fearful. They were isolated. But he told them to wait. Go to Jerusalem and wait. Something's going to happen there. I wonder what it was. They didn't know. They did not know. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit came into the room like a strong driving wind, opened the doors, went through everything in there, and started to refresh and renew everyone and renew all of life, really. That was an incredible moment. And then he sent tongues that were in the shape of fire on their heads. And the tongues of fire descended into their bodies, burned out the fear, burned out the sin, put them on fire with the love of God. So power, fire, and the gift of tongues. People were able to speak in languages they don't even know. You heard that all the people were gathered in Jerusalem in those days for the Feast of Pentecost, which was actually a Jewish feast day. And on that day, they were to bring their harvest and, and burn it and offer as a holocaust in the temple to God. Well, all of a sudden, these people came out of this upper room and started telling them about Jesus, how he was the fulfillment of the prophecy of old. He was the Messiah. He was the fulfillment of everything they had ever dreamt for. And they started speaking what they call the kerygma, which was telling that story of the life ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. People were converted on the spot, on the spot conversions. When, as soon as they heard the word of God, wow, thousands of people were converted. They were baptized by the disciples and apostles. That was an apocalyptic day, a beautiful day. And you know what? The Holy Spirit's been with the church ever since, ever since he's been walking with us. You know now, in scriptural language and understanding of God, 1,000 years are like one day, and one day like a 1,000 years. Hmm, what's happened in Christianity over 2,000 years? 1.2 billion Catholics, and almost 2 billion, or a little over 2 billion, all Christians taken together. A lot's happened in two days, wouldn't you say so? From the assembly of 12 and a few other disciples to 2 point something billion Christians throughout the world, 
the Holy Spirit's been working. And so he uses us if we ask him to help us. The Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is the personified love of God, the love of God the Father for the Son, which he poured himself out through the Word, and the love of the Son for the Father. Jesus' whole purpose and mission in life was to fulfill the mission the Father gave him and to do his will and that alone. He poured himself out time and again to convince people of that. You know what? Jesus and the Holy Spirit love you. They want you to be ready to go to the kingdom of heaven, to be worthy of seeing God face to face, God the Father, when we're called into the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is already here, but it's not yet completely fulfilled. You and I know, brothers and sisters, that all of creation is groaning. Look at all the troubles we're having throughout the world. All of creation is groaning for the Savior, and the Lord is here to help deliver us. Who knows? He could come back at any time. We have to be living on the edge of our seats, ready to go when he calls us by name. Now, I hear something going on among people. They have been perhaps falsely formed or catechized, thinking that I have to do this and this and this and this and this to get myself perfectly ready to receive God. That is incorrect. No, no. God is love. He loves you. In fact, he loved you first before you loved him in return. He's still doing it constantly. Don't worry about having your life in complete order to receive the mercy of Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit's going to pour into you if you say, come Holy Spirit, yes into me. I know I don't have everything together. I know I'm far from perfect, but I repent of my sins and I give my hands into you and to your love because I know you love me. Your mercy's pouring out to me. In fact, it's because I am a sinner, not because I'm already a saint, that you love me and you're walking with me. You're inside of me. You're all around me. Just help me see you and say, come, Holy Spirit. Come to me. Come to me, Holy Spirit. Come to the church throughout the world and pour out your spirit upon all the earth and renew the face of the earth, as we heard in that beautiful psalm. That sequence that we heard chanted today, come, Holy Spirit, come. And from your celestial home, that means your heavenly home, shed a ray of light divine. Light divine means truth. All the shadows are cast away. We see the kingdom right here among us. Come, Father of the poor. God loves the poor especially because they're so downtrodden and beaten down. We have them all around us. Come, source of all of our store. That means everything we have comes from God. Everything's a gift. Everything around us and everyone around us is a gift. Come within our bosom shine. Come within our hearts and shine forth. You of comforters the best. Today, people need comfort. Don't go to things and people and all that sort of thing for comfort. Come to the Comforter who is the Holy Spirit. He will give your soul consolation and peace. In fact, the the sequence says, you the soul's most welcome guest. As soon as people receive the Holy Spirit, they recognize this is what I've been longing for. And I didn't realize, Holy Spirit, that you were here all the time. I just missed you because I had so many distractions, because I wasn't really paying attention. You've been right here all along. Solace in the midst of woe. Solace means comfort, but an extraordinary type of comfort in the midst of terrible times. Shine within these hearts of yours and in our inmost being fill. Where you are not, we have nothing, nothing good in deed or thought, nothing free from the taint of ill. Heal our wounds. So many people are wounded today, and unfortunately they hurt so badly they can't get their eyes on anything else. Give your wounds to Jesus. Give your wounds to the Holy Spirit. Ask him to fill those wounds and to heal them right there, right in your room, right in in your hospital, right in your prison cell, right there. Ask him to come in and just say, come Holy Spirit, I'm tired of running my own life. I'm not doing a very good job. I give you control of my life, and I welcome you. You are welcome here, Holy Spirit. We love you. We want you in our lives. We want you to lead us to salvation, for this life is so very, very short. So very, very short. We have no guarantee of any more days, of any more breaths in life. You know what? Take this day. 
This day has never existed before. This day will never exist again. There's only one today. And isn't it interesting that we sleep at night and we have the next day only by the grace of God? Don't waste any time, brothers and sisters. Take this day. Carpe diem. Carpe diem. Use this day for the greater honor of God. Ask him to give good order to your life. Ask him to send you an awareness of the truth and the love all around you. Open your eyes, your physical eyes, but the eyes of your faith. And let him love you. Let him pour into you. Let him show you the truth. You know, the truth always sets us free, but it hurts like you know what before. Just persevere. Go into the truth. Walk into the truth with courage and let him deliver you and free you from the bondage of evil. May God bless each and every one of you and fill you with the power and the love and the truth of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray that the same Spirit who transformed the apostles may breathe new life into his church. For the people of Christ's church, that the Spirit may inspire us with new gifts of wisdom and understanding and fortitude to know what must be done and to do it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For the leaders of Christ's church, that they may recognize the Spirit's work and protect and foster it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are separated from Christ by sin, by refusal to know and accept themselves, the wor world, and God's love, that the Spirit may liberate them from narrowness and fear and may lead them to openness and freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who may be praying along with us in this Mass, for their health and well-being, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis's monthly intention, let us pray that those in charge of finance will work with governments to regulate the financial sphere and protect citizens from its dangers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Ricken's monthly intention, 
for those suffering from mental, physical, or spiritual illness, that the intercession of our Mother Mary may assist towards healing and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray now the prayer in honor of St. Joseph. Good St. Joseph, as you led the Holy Family, watch over our families. Help our family and all families to know and share God's love. In our family relationships, may we find healing and seek to be holy. May our fathers help us to become faithful disciples of Jesus who share our love for him. As foster father of Jesus, watch over all who serve as spiritual fathers. In a special way, bless our Holy Father, our Bishop, and our priests. May they follow your humble example in their fatherly care for the people of God, the Church. With Mary, you raised Jesus the High Priest. You know our need for priests. Please raise up good and holy priests from our families to serve the people of our diocese. May our children and grandchildren hear and say yes to the call of Jesus, just as you and Mary did. Good Saint Joseph, pray for us. and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy every land Every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <clears throat>
are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with their blessed apostle and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis Xavier, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now, brothers and sisters, let us pray that beautiful prayer that Jesus has given us. And at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. So my brothers and sisters, let us pause for a moment of silence. And from this altar, from this Holy Eucharist, and from our hearts, let us extend peace to a troubled world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke of the marvels of God. Alleluia.
join in the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, you who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all of its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I just have a few little reflections I'd like to give since we do have some extra time. I really hope you learn to grow in the love of this beautiful day, Pentecost. But it's not just a day, it's an invitation to be aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives all the time. We had a beautiful gift in the Diocese of Green Bay this past week. One of our priests, Father Dan Felton, was consecrated and ordained as a bishop, the Bishop of Duluth, Minnesota. It was so nice to meet some of the priests there and to see the beautiful ceremony. I don't know if you had a chance to watch it by live stream, but it truly was a really beautiful ceremony. 
and the richness of the, the ordination of a bishop from a priest to a bishop is truly a unique and special gift. We pray for Bishop Dan and for all the priests, the religious, the lay faithful in that wonderful diocese. A lot of beautiful uh, scenery there, kind of tough winters. Uh, so, but you know, the people shine. The people of God shine wherever they are. And it's a joy to be able to give this gift to uh, Father Dan, now Bishop, Bishop uh, Felton, the Bishop of Duluth. Thank you for your prayers. Keep receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. I welcome you into my life. You are no stranger to me anymore every day. I see you active and make me your instrument of peace and so many other gifts you want to give. Now bow your head for the blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who is pleased to enlighten the disciples' mind by the outpouring of the Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Thanks for praying with us today. A special thanks goes to the Bergstrom Automotive family and to the Bishop's Appeal for supporting this broadcast. May God bless you. Remember, God loves you, the church loves you, and so do I.